how good is this Ascar 200mm f4 lens on a full-frame camera? Let's find out. Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to my balcony. Today we're going to talk about this lens, the Ascar 200mm f4 ACL v2 whatever lens and we want to see how good it is in full frame. So I have seen reviews of the lens on cloudy nights that show perfect stars in the corners on a full frame sensor. Uh, my tests up to now have been done without a tracking mount so using only the Astro Tracer uh, functionality of my Pentax K1 full frame camera and I wanted and I didn't see perfect stars in the corners but I wasn't sure why is it the, the fault of my Astro Tracer like internal star tracker system or is it something else I want to find out today now for this purpose we need to first understand how this lens connects to a camera uh, this lens this lens is meant to be able to connect easily to both DSLRs like this one mirrorless cameras or astro specific astro dedicated cameras and because of that it doesn't come with a bayonet mount it comes with actually an m48 connection and from this m48 connection uh, you need 55 millimeters to the sensor to have the proper distance now uh, I'm using a conversion con a converter basically from this m48 size that's output by the lens to um, a Pentax bayonet and then I'm connecting the camera to the Pentax bayonet the adapter between m48 and the Pentax camera also known as a T-ring except that in this case it probably would be better known as an M48 ring um, is made by William Optics but the thing is how are we sure that we get exactly 55 millimeters between the lens and the camera sensor because there are tons of factors that can determine whether um, the, the, the corner of your sensor the stars in the corner of your sensor are nice and pinpoint and uh, one of those fa factors is tilt meaning like the, the the camera sensor itself is not square with regards to the lens uh, focal plane effectively and so we'll get like in one direction stars that might be perfect in the center but gradually get um, elongated kind of oblong as you get further away from the sensor and that happens uh, along the, the direction of tilt basically and um, I was wondering whether Astro Tracer was actually introducing tilt it doesn't in theory but that could have been a reason there's another thing that can happen with the corners with uh, telescope focal reducers is if you are too close to the camera typically you'll see uh, stars in the corner becoming kind of like comets that are pointing outwards that are pointing like towards the corners of the camera if the if the um, the camera itself is too far from your focal reducer you get uh, comets as well like elongated elongated stars but they're perpendicular to the line that we go from the center of the sensor to the corner of the sensor um, and so using that you can actually you know determine whether you're too far or too close to uh, the lens or to your telescope now does this apply to this lens I don't know but just in case from Aliexpress I ordered a set of cheapo M48 rings that I can basically put in between the lens and the adapter for my Pentax camera and uh, we have one is 0.5 millimeters the other a second one is 0.8 millimeters and then we have a third one that is one millimeter so I'll be testing with each of those rings one in turn to see whether the star shapes change with the distance from the lens to the camera sensor and I assume they would and those distances they can be very very specific and they're very very sensitive and that's why you have micro adjustment of focus for camera lenses within the camera body like you know for autofocus to work properly sometimes depending on the lens you need to set micro adjustments for DSLR bodies that support it it's exactly the same principle it's exactly the same cause the distance between the sensor and the lens is, is not quite exact it, it's like you have tolerances and so with those rings I hope to find out because if 
the issues that I was seeing with my frames, they're small, but they're still there, were due to the distance from the sensor to the lens. Well, it looked like it would be because the sensor was too close. So with that, we're going to be able to tell it to make it further away. Now to make sure as well that I do not mess up with the camera itself, I'll be doing remote shooting like that with um, a, a simple button based thingy, whatever we call it. And um, I'll be putting that again on my polar aligned equatorial mount and I'll be taking short exposures of maybe five seconds or so. Okay, so now I have taken the camera with the lens currently without any um, spacer ring and I'm mounting, I've mounted it on top of my telescope. My telescope, I will make it point towards um, an area that's rich in stars, Altair in this case, and I'm going to focus the lens and then I am going to take three separate uh, 10 second exposures, one with each of the spacers that I showed earlier in this video. Then we're going to have a look at those on the computer. Okay, and we are inside to look at the results. Now, um, here we are looking at the image which has been um, changed so that we can see the center of the frame here. And then each in, in the, of the corners is like top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. So we can see the whole image, uh, but just like specific areas of it. And we can see that the image is not perfect, but if we look only at the right hand side of the image, the stars are quite good all the way through. There's a bit of like weird shapes here, but where things get really weird is to the left. And to the left, you can also see that the um, level of light, like the brightness is darker. So it's almost looking like vignetting or it could simply be tilt and that's kind of what I'm thinking here because one of the things you can see as well is that the stars here that are shaped a bit like comets on the um, on the left hand side um, they are all shaped like comets in the same direction so I'm not sure exactly what's happening whether it's the fault of the lens um, or it's the fault of um, of the adapter that I have for my camera, or it's even the fault of the camera because my camera was astromodded, meaning someone went in and removed the filter off of the sensor. Um, and maybe that did something, I do not know. Uh, so there is a bit of, you know, like misshapen stars on the very left side for me, for my particular camera on a full frame. Um, and it's much, much less noticeable just a bit uh, like before the edge of the frame. So it's working quite well overall. And this is without spacer of any kind. And I have also taken the pictures, as I was saying, with the uh, thin, medium thin and uh, thick um, spacers. And if we look at, at those, the first spacer is also quite interesting. Um, and this is the first uh, spacer. We get some really weird stuff going on in here. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but especially on the left hand side, like the stars are, are shaped like crazy. And I'm not sure again, what is the cause for this? Um, if we look at the second spacer, we can actually see something that's very similar to the first image without any spacer, um, except that it's even worse. And the last spacer, spacer the thickest one, thickest one, for some reason, gives almost the best result. So the stars are kind of like okay all over the place. They're a bit like elongated here, but otherwise not bad. And I see no rhyme or reason for that, really. So am I missing something? I don't know. But let's remember that we are doing something that's very difficult for any lens to achieve. And of course, it's all at f4 here, which is full frame on a star field. And um, especially when looking at this result here, I think that the lens is really doing very well. And uh, the result without any spacer is also, uh, I think, quite decent, um, despite the left hand side of the picture being uh, a bit less good, it's really not such a big deal, especially at 200 millimeters 
I expect to be cropping, especially if I'm using like Pentax Astros Tracer. So I'll be re-centering manually the object from time to time. That will lead to lots of cropping. Even if I'm using a star tracker, I'd likely be doing dithering from time to time. Uh, we'd have some field rotation, that kind of stuff that would lead to cropping. And uh, I think I am, I am perfectly fine with what I see here. Again, I don't know what the cause is. It could be the lens itself has a, an issue compared to other samples. So we could have sample variability, which is nothing new for lenses, although it is a bit disappointing. But if you guys know me, you know that I don't care that much about the small details. I don't think this would dis detract from a final image uh, unless you're pixel peeping and if you're pixel peeping like are you even looking at the image and that's um, that's what I see with that particular lens I still think that overall like for a full frame sensor it's it's a it's a very very good achievement in that uh, format at 200 millimeters and I will definitely be uh, using this lens uh, going forward uh, I'm not sponsored by anyone by the way and I bought uh, this lens myself. Um, so that was it for this uh, video. I hope this was useful to see like how well optically the Ascar lens uh, performs. If you have suggestions about what I can do to help with my left hand side of the frame or if you think you know the reason, please let me know down below in the comments. If you like this kind of review, analysis, tips and tricks about astrophotography, well, feel free to go down below to subscribe, click that bell button, leave a comment, leave a like, etc. But more importantly, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.